Yo, what's going on guys, Kultimush back at it with another video, and in this video, I want to talk about the long-term benefits of PC gaming, and why that's one of the best parts about PC gaming, the long-term incentives that it has. Now, initially, when you compare PC gaming to console gaming, PC, 99% of the times, is gonna be more expensive right off the bat. I know a lot of people try to make these $50 PCs, these $300 PCs using all used parts, but I know the majority of people just buying their PC, that's not what they want to do. They want to buy brand new parts. And with buying brand new parts, yeah, you can build a PC for around $350 to $400, but that's not what most people are going to do. If you're getting into PC gaming, most of the times, I say most because obviously there's an outlier here or there of people wanting to build PCs for $300, but most of the time you're looking to spend at least $500, sometimes more than that, $550, $600, $700, $800, and north of that. Some people even spend as high as $2,000 on their PC. PC, but obviously those are the people that have more disposable income. It seems like the majority of people stick to that $700 to $1,000 line. And that's expensive for a gaming PC. If you compare it to something like the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One, you can pick up a PS4 for like $300 and be done with it. You don't have to build it. It comes right out of the box. You plug it into the wall. Maybe you'll have to go through some updates, but for the most part, it's going to work. It might give you crappy performance, but it is going to work. It's going to boot up your games. So in the short term to the naked eye, the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox One may be the more attractive option. Especially if you've never gamed on a PC, you really don't know how 60 frames per second plays like, you don't know how smooth 1080p 60 FPS plays like I should say, then the PS4 or the Xbox One is probably going to be the more attractive option. But where the PC really shines is long term. Now obviously the performance and the graphics are better, but you're paying for that so you're expecting them to be better. But long term when you're gaming on PC, there are so many benefits and I really bring up this point because of the recent announcement of the PlayStation 4 Pro. If you guys somehow don't know Know what that is and I don't blame you most of my followers are PC gamers they don't really follow consoles but I digress the PlayStation 4 Pro is essentially an upgraded model of the PlayStation 4 it's releasing this fall and it's going to retail for $399 it's going to have some graphical improvements some performance improvements things like that before the PS4 Pro was actually announced a lot of people were expecting this console to be a world beater some people even went as far as to think this console would be able to run games at a native 4k and while people were saying that I was like you're absolutely stupid if you actually believe that a PS4 Pro is going to be able to run games natively at 4k do you really think Sony's going to release a console and charge a thousand dollars for it and to be perfectly honest to run games at a native 4k you'd probably need more than a thousand dollars I mean look at what you need on PC to run games smooth at 4k you need some beefy hardware and there were some people that actually thought that was coming out on the PS4 Pro but now I'm getting on a tangent the PS4 Pro will offer minor improvements some games will look better Better. Some games will have a smoother frame rate, but a lot of the newer games aren't even gonna run at 60 FPS. Mass Effect Andromeda is one of the games that, yes, it's gonna have improvements on PS4 Pro, but it's still gonna be running at 30 FPS. So when you game on a console, you're really locked into what you have for that generation. Even with Sony offering the PS4 Pro now, if you have a PS4 and you upgrade to the PS4 Pro, okay, you drop $400, but you're not gonna be getting the performance increase that $400 warrants you. So let's backtrack and talk about PC gaming. Let's say you bought a $700 PC. Three years down the line, the performance isn't what you want. You drop $400 on a new graphics card and you're gonna be getting a lot better performance. The upgradeability options on PC are so much more than what's offered on consoles. In the past with consoles, you'd just be locked into a console for that whole generation. Now, you've got different SKUs with things like the PS4 Pro, but really, it's a ripoff if you already own the regular PS4. You're still pretty much locked into that console baseline performance. With PC, the great thing about it is that you're never locked in. There are so many options. Okay, you built a $600, $700 PC in 2016, but in three years down the line, all you'll have to do is upgrade the graphics card, and then you'll be getting really great performance again. With the PS4, and keep in mind, I bought my PS4 on launch day, so I've been there since the beginning. I could sense the performance just decline year after year, and then you hit games like The Witcher 3 and Fallout 4, and they just run so poorly on the PS4 that I would never play them more than a half hour because of how poorly they run, and you're locked into that performance. You don't have the option to upgrade, and you're screwed. That's why short term, the PS4 might be an appealing option, and if you can deal with the poor frame rates, more power to you, but on PC, I really like the fact that if I do ever get shitty performance, I have the option to upgrade, and that's what you want out of your
your gaming experience. You always want options. Some people don't understand this. With a lot of developers locking away options, what gamers want is options. Options in how to play the games that they want to play, and that's what PC offers you. And it doesn't stop there. Let me go back to the initial price when you're comparing a PS4 and a PC. Okay, a PS4, let's say you pay $300 for it. Don't forget about that PlayStation Plus, which, by the way, just had a price increase. Used to be $50 a year, well, now you're dropping $60 a year. So let's say you stick with this console for three years, that's another $180, and three years is a pretty short life cycle for a console. Usually, people stick with a console for more like four to five years, so if you think about it that way, you're gonna be dropping like $240 to $300 just to play online. Sure, you get some free games, but honestly, the PlayStation Plus games have been nothing to write home about, and a lot of them, you can find them on PC in the Humble Bundle where you can just drop a dollar and get them. So you get the idea. To the naked eye, the PlayStation 4, this $300 box that can run every game, it sounds very enticing. But there's a lot of hidden costs, and the hidden cost doesn't stop there. Obviously, there's the games too, which on PC, it's by far the cheapest. You can find games on launch day for $40 to $45 when they retail for $60, usually on PS4, you're gonna be paying at least $50. I know like things like Amazon Prime, you can get 20% off new releases, but then it's still $48, you gotta pay tax. You're still dropping like $50, $55 on new release games. On PC, new releases are cheaper and older games are so much cheaper in things like the Steam sales, Humble Bundles, you got GMG, GOG. There's so many options in where you pick up your games for great deals. And again, PC gaming gives you those options in the long term. Where with the PlayStation 4, if you want to buy games digitally, really the only option you have is the PlayStation Store. And the sales on the PlayStation Store are relatively mediocre. Sometimes they are pretty good, don't get me wrong, but they pale in comparison to what you can find on PC. And when you take into account of all of that, the fact that you're getting cheaper games, the fact that you don't have to pay for online, and the fact that you're never locked into what you have on PC, you just have so many long-term benefits, and in a lot of cases, playing on PC will end up making you spend less money than if you were a console gamer. But obviously, somebody like me, I like to get the best performance possible, so I am dropping more money than your typical console gamer. You don't need a 1070, you don't need to drop $400 on a graphics card, you can drop $200 and still get very great performance. So that's the general idea. If you guys are hesitant on jumping over to PC because of the price point, know that there's a lot of benefits when you look at it from a long-term perspective. And I know a lot of people that are younger with social media being on the rage, it's all about instant gratification and obviously instant gratification for the cheapest price possible. But don't always think like that. There's more to life than just next week. There's next year. There's five years down the line. And I feel like I'm talking really deep about video games right now. So I'm going to stop that mumbo jumbo. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm going to wrap it up. If you guys enjoyed, hit that like button. If not, you can dislike. If you have a request for a future video, you can leave it in the comment section down below. And as always, guys, thanks for watching and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.